So we are finally at part eight, which is the last part in the series I've been doing on making a cat in Blender. So in the previous parts, we've done everything from the modeling all the way through to getting to the point where our rigging's done. And um, what we're gonna do now is do our animation. But before we do that, let's just clean up our file a little bit. So let's take the things we created in the previous part. So let's grab the backdrop here and these lights. And let's just go M and let's go new collection. Let's just move them to a collection called stage and go OK. And let's take that stage for now and just turn that off. Not the render, but just the display. And let's take our camera as well and just drag that into the stage as well. And then we're going to take our main collection and call it cat. And inside of there we have our two eyes and our cat, which is perfect. And then we can take our ref and just pull that to the very bottom. We don't need to see that. And we have our rig, which we created earlier. We already have that on its collections. We can turn that on and off, but for now we want it on. So just the stage and the ref should be hidden. And I like to just give these some colors, um, which is completely optional if you right click on them. Um, but yeah, this is kind of what I'm gonna do. So now we have that set up. And now we're gonna go to our right orthographic view. Important. Let's select our cat and let's also go to our modifiers. And to make things more efficient, Let's just come here and hide the particles. And I'm also gonna go up here to my viewport shading and I'm gonna enable texture, like so. And now let's go Control S to save. And now let's select our cat rig and let's go into the pose mode. And let's drag up our timeline. And we're gonna come here and give this 40 frames at the end value. So we're gonna work from one to 40 over here with the animation. So we're gonna come over onto frame one and let's actually grab on frame one, the front paw over here on the left. So you can actually see the bone name is um, front leg dot capital underscore IK dot capital L. And what we're gonna do in our right orthographic view, we're gonna go G and we're gonna go Y and move it forward like so. And then we're gonna grab this one over here on the other side, the other IK and in the right view, we're gonna go G, Y and move it back. And then we're gonna grab the cat body control up here. We're gonna go G and just lower the body a little bit, like so, and maybe move it just a bit forward like that. Okay, and we can grab the shoulder here or the spine and just rotate it down just a little bit. And now with all that done, we're gonna go and in fact, let's just grab these bones here, the back legs over here. Let's just grab them and go H to hide them for now. And with everything else selected, we're just gonna go ahead and select it. And on frame one, we're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation keyframe. Okay, so now we have a keyframe. And while we're still on frame one and we have those keyframes, let's just grab these two IKs like so. So select them both by holding in shift. Then go control C or command C. That's gonna copy this pose. Then you're gonna go over to frame 20. And on frame 20, what you're gonna do is you're gonna go Control Shift V or Command Shift V and that's gonna inverse it. And then with all of these bones selected, press A to select everything. Then you're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation on frame 20. So now this is what we have, like that. And this is also part of the reason why that naming convention is really important, the dot capital R and dot capital L. So Blender can do this interpolation automatically. So now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go to frame 10 in the middle because at the moment they're just sliding like this, All right? So we're gonna go to frame 10. And on frame 10, we're gonna grab this one, the dot R, one over here, the IK for the right side. And in our right orthographic view, let's enable auto keying. So that's gonna automatically add in a key. And then we're gonna go G and move the paw up and forward a little bit like so. And maybe even rotate it like that, okay? So now we have that. And if you now actually go to frame one and you drag through, you can see this is what we have, like that, okay? And then while we're still in frame 10, we're just gonna press A to select everything. We're gonna go I and insert a location and rotation. And then what we're gonna do is with, while we're still actually here in frame 10, we're gonna go Control C to select everything. So Control and C to copy everything. And then we're gonna come over to frame 30 and we're gonna go Control Shift and V, Control Shift V. And we still have auto keying enabled, so it's gonna automatically add that in as a keyframe. So now if we drag through, we can see this is what we have. And then it lifts back up. And then what we're gonna do, we're gonna come to the very first 
frame here and go control C with everything still active and let's come to frame 40 and then let's just go control V or command V to inverse to um, copy that over here okay so now what we have is it goes through the cycle then it's an inverse so it's the reverse of the one that happens on frame 10 over here at 30 and then it goes back to where we started so if we now go to frame one and we hit the space bar we should have this walk cycle like that now obviously it looks very mechanical so let's um on frame 10 let's just also grab this body bone and just move our cat up a little bit and then come to frame 20 just lower him a little bit and then come to frame 30 let's just lift our cat up a little bit and now we have a little bit of up and down in the cat's body as well okay and later on we'll you know animate the head going up and down as well but for now let's also go and turn off auto keying let's go alt h to bring back the other bones and for now let's just select these front leg bones and go h to hide them and now let's go to frame one and on frame one we're going to do something very similar so this time we're going to select the right um, back leg ik as well and in our right orthographic view let's just enable auto keying and go g y and move that forward on the y we do have auto keying enabled so it's automatically adding in a keyframe and let's grab the left one and go g y and just move that back like so and then we're going to just select all of these leg bones and go i and insert a location and a rotation and then let's go over to frame 20 and then let's select these two iks again for the back and then go Control c and with them both selected, let's just quickly go back to frame one and go control C or command C to copy. Let's quickly pop back to 20 and then go control shift V or command shift V to inverse them like this. And now we have this going on as well. And what we need to do now is come to frame 10 and on frame 10, we're now gonna take this leg over here, the left one in the back. And on frame 10, we're gonna go G and move that guy up and forward a little bit and just rotate the pull like that and then we're going to select all these bones and go i and insert our location and rotation so now this is what we have okay but obviously we now need to do the same thing where you do the negative so let's come here to frame 10 and if all of these leg bones selected let's just go Control c and then let's go to 30 and go Control shift v we still have auto keying so it's automatically added in those frames and then let's go to frame one and just go Control c to copy and then come to 40 and go, and go control v just to paste it in from where we started so now if we go to frame one and we hit the space bar this is kind of what we have okay and now we can go alt h just to bring everything back and now with auto king still enabled we can come here in the middle and now let's give the head as this cat's coming forward let's give the head a little bit of a tilt up like so and as it's coming down again, let's give it a little bit of a tilt down, including the shoulders here. Let's just give it a little bit of a tilt like so. And then as it comes back up, let's just give it another little bit of a tilt like so, just slightly. And now we can see there's a little bit of movement in the cat's head. And let's grab the hips here as well. So let's come to frame 10 and let's, as the cat lifts up, let's let the it lifts up a little bit like this. Come to frame 20, let it go down a little bit. Let's go to frame 30 and up a little bit. And now just that little bit of extra um, movement in there is really adding something to it. And you can also now grab the tail and let's come to frame 10. In frame 10, let's just lift the tail slightly and rotate it like so. And then on frame 20, let's let it go down a little bit and rotating down, just slight, very slight. And then on 30, let's just lift it up a little bit and rotate it like so. And now this is what we have, okay? Just a little bit of rotation or wobble in the tail like that. Now, this is just very basic. And in real life, you would do a lot more things to make this feel a bit more natural, less mechanical. You could add in more controllers, some soft bodies to kind of like make it jiggle a little bit but this is kind of just a basic walk cycle there's a lot more that could be said about this but um let's also grab the eyes and let's just go to frame 20 and frame or maybe even frame 15 so it's a bit of an offset and let's just kind of make the cat look to the side like so so this is what we kind of have the cat looks and um let's just come to frame 
In fact, with the just with the eye controller here selected, let's just grab all of the middle frames and delete them. So we have it like this, and then let's come at 15, and then he looks over. And let's just make a hold. So select this and go Shift D, have a bit of a hold, and then he looks back. Okay, but obviously um, over such a short animation, it looks really too repetitive. What you would do in real life is you would kind of like extend the walk cycle and then you do individual little um, animations for the eye movements and stuff. And you would kind of do that in the um, the dope sheet over here as well. So you could do these little like packets of animation and you kind of layer them on top of each other. But you know, this is kind of more just getting across to beginners how to do a basic walk cycle animation. And this also makes our cat kind of come to life a little bit. And what I might do is just kind of get rid of that eye. Maybe just have it go down a little bit instead. Or up. Yeah, but anyway. Now we kind of have a walk cycle animation. So I'm just going to go ahead, turn off auto king. Let's go, I'm back in object mode. And let's just go turn off the rig. And we'll grab our cat. Let's just turn the fur back on in the display. And there we have it. And obviously with the fur, we might have to come, if you want to see the fur in the viewport, you have to come and bring the display down to at least five or so. Otherwise it's going to lag a little bit in the viewport. But yeah, that is how we make a cat in Blender. I really hope you guys have enjoyed this series and it will be up on my Patreon as well. So you can find the very finished product on my Patreon. That's all in the description. And also you can follow me on Instagram. We can also share the results from this project. I'll see you guys next time.